Hi, my name is Amanda Southworth. I'm 15 years old, I'm a junior in high school, and I'm ill. As you can see, I'm not physically ill. I can walk, talk, breathe, and even dance, but not very well. <laughs> I'm not ill on the outside. I'm ill on the inside. And I don't have a tumor, internal bleeding, cancer, or anything like that. But what I have is one of the biggest killers in the world today. I have mental illness. More specifically, I have depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress disorder. What this means for me is that mentally, I'm somewhat of a hot mess. <laughs> it starts with depression, which makes it hard for me to feel. Not just happy emotions, but sad ones too. For me, depression is nothingness. It's kind of like a void. It sucks away everything, good or bad. I don't eat, I don't sleep, and I don't work. I tend to just drop off the face of the earth. But sometimes feeling nothing is better than feeling every emotion at once, which is what my anxiety does to me. My experience with anxiety is like having a close friend, but this friend is hurt and afraid of everything. And you can understand it, yet it feels like you can't do anything to stop it. My anxiety is my friend who's scared of getting hurt, but my post-traumatic stress disorder makes it feel like everything is out to hurt me. For me, as long as I can remember, it's always been like this. I had my first therapy appointment over six years ago. Soon, I will have been mentally ill for over half of my life. Nobody really knows where it started, but in between elementary and middle school, I moved to Newtown. I knew no one, and as I arrived on the first day, that was pretty obvious. Everyone had friends, and I felt like an outsider. I didn't fit in, and I was sometimes bullied. As middle school progressed, I turned my destructive behavior inwards. I convinced myself that if I am of no worth to others, then I have no worth myself. Over the course of 2012 to 2016, I've attempted suicide at least seven times. The exact number is unknown, as I would take pills, wake up, and forget all about the previous night. I would walk around and think of my funeral, how will we go? I would plan what items would be distributed to my friends, and how it was going to be thought of by people who didn't know me. I would go to school with the only thought getting me through the day being my upcoming suicide attempt. I would wake up and cry for hours because I didn't die in my sleep. Growing up, I was kind of always seen as the pest, a brat. I didn't see myself as a person. I saw myself as the amount of money my parents would have to spend on me, or the annoyance in someone's face when I asked a stupid question. To me, I wasn't a person. I was just a burden. But what were probably the worst years of my life led me to the best current years. In the sixth grade, I was invited to compete with a robotics club. I fell in love with engineering, building, programming, and just anything to do with technology. All throughout middle school and high school, I would spend hours upon hours just building websites, apps, coding, designing, anything I could get my hands on. I loved programming because for the first time, I wasn't being destructive. I was being creative. My projects had value, and I finally had worth. In September of 2015, I launched my first app, which gives people resources and tools to cope with anxiety, depression, and panic attacks. In May of 2017, I launched my second app, which acts as a security system for the LGBTQ community. I didn't expect this, but my apps gave me a purpose and a reason to stick around. Because of this, we're more than halfway through 2017, and I haven't self-harmed or attempted suicide once this year. <laughs> That's pretty cool because I haven't been able to say that for the past five years. So as a result, I've devoted my time to helping others who've been in my position. As a result, I get a lot of messages and I've heard a lot of stories. What these stories have shown me was that mental illness affects everyone. Even if you yourself are not directly mentally ill, there may be someone in your life who is affected, and in turn, it's affecting you. Considering how big of a problem this is, we as a society don't pay enough attention to it. I mean, it's happening all around us, yet we typically don't notice it. We tend to assume that if you can function and get through the day, that you're okay. But that's not the case. 
According to DoSomething.org, someone in the U.S. attempts suicide every 16 minutes. By the time I finish speaking, at least one person will have taken their own life. It can occur within the people we know, and even within the people we least expect it from. For example, take Chester Bennington, the lead singer of Linkin Park, one of the bands that helped me and millions of other people during dark times. He recently committed suicide. The truth is, we can't control mental illness or suicide. We can only control how we support and treat the people who have it. But that can mean the difference between life and death. I didn't even know this until I met someone named Victor. One night, upon going through social media, I discovered a boy posting about wanting to end his life. I messaged him, and as he replied, I began to do something called grounding, which is a technique used to distract someone if they're feeling highly emotional. I asked him questions about what he enjoys, and I soon realized that we had a lot in common. We had a love of many of the same shows, the same bands, and the same people. We soon developed a strong friendship in which we supported each other constantly. A couple of months after our initial meeting, Victor confessed to me that I saved his life that night. Meeting Victor gave me the clarity to see that support can mean everything. It even showed me that things that were small and boring within my own life were my reasons to stay alive. I mean, if I wasn't going to cuddle with my cat, who was? <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> who would water my plants if I was gone or continue my apps? Sure, other people may take over those duties, but nobody could replace me. Seeing support of all kinds has shown me support can be the difference between ending your life or finally gaining the courage to reach out and change it. Besides purpose, my apps have given me the opportunity to meet people from all walks of life. I've met people who've been through things that I can't even begin to comprehend. I've seen the differences within people, yet I also see the similarities. And at the end of the day, although the things we go through may differ, we all have battles to fight. We all want someone to support and care for us. Everything in my life has shown me that both good and bad things in this world will continue to happen, and that's out of our control. But it's what we do with the things that happen to us that can make all of the difference. So my name is Amanda Southworth. I'm 15 years old, a junior in high school, and I'm still alive. <laughs>